What's up everybody, it's your boy Skips here with another video for you guys here today and what we are going to be talking about is me ranking the various Nier and Dragon Guard games. This is obviously not a super big series, seeing as it technically has 6 games but really there are 5 games within the entire series and I will go over my quick thoughts about why each of them deserve their place on this simple tier list. And now simply starting it off with the game that started it all which is Dragon Guard, which I am going to sit right here in the mid tier which is B. Obviously, this was Yoko Taro's first time directing any game ever, and with his input, ended up making something very unique and going a lot darker than any games that we have previously seen before. Obviously, since then, we have seen very dark games and dark storytelling appear in games many, many times since then. But before Yoko Taro, there weren't really many, too many games that would go as far as he would. And still, there are a lot of games that just frankly won't go as far as he would with some of the themes and topics that he explores in this first game. Um, not to mention only that the gameplay is kind of a mixed bag when you're playing on the ground as Kane. While it is somewhat okay, and I would even say a little bit pleasing to not really think about what you're doing while slicing down enemies, where the game really exceeds at is in the dragon combat when you play as Angelus. They got her perfectly right in this game. She feels graceful, but she also has a lot of weight to her, as a dragon should have. Um, she feels very powerful, but also feels like she could dash out and close in on you at any moment, as you should feel when playing as a dragon. So that's why Dragon Guard will sit at the mid tier. While the story is absolutely amazing, the gameplay is kind of a mixed bag with the ground combat being kind of an afterthought because Square Enix wanted a Dynasty Warriors clone because that was blowing up at the time where the original concept of the game was going to be something like Panzer Dragoon and mainly focus on the dragon flying aspect. So moving on into Dragon Guard 2 which will obviously be going into D tier and I'm going to elaborate a little bit on my thoughts of this game because I am making a full video talking about this very soon but Dragon Guard 2 in all purposes is a Dragon Guard game, it's set in the Dragon Guard universe, uses the characters, uses a lot of the concepts of Dragon Guard, but it doesn't feel like it. Um, honestly, it's not as dark, which is not saying that that's all Dragon Guard is, but with a lot of Yoko Tal's storytelling, that is one of the big things that kind of drew a lot of people to the original Dragon Guard. So, it really, really throws me off that they would really tone that back for one thing. Next, on top of that, when you get to the sky combat, they completely messed up the flying mechanics. Whereas Angelus felt like a graceful but heavy beast in the first one, Legna felt like a toy airplane. And honestly felt too erratic to control if I had to put my words into it. Not to mention the endings of this game are definitely not worth it if you have ever played through this game all the way through to get all of the endings. It's honestly just a waste of time. And to be quite honest, I'll talk about my opinions on this game in another video and we're going to move on into Near Replicant and Near Gestalt, which are both going to be sitting at B and A tier. Replicant is simply under Gestalt, even though they are the exact same game, it's just that the plight of a father trying to save his daughter for me, as opposed to an older brother trying to save his little sister, pulls on my heartstrings a lot more. But just the twist and turns that this story takes, with you fighting these enemies called the Shades, and this is a big spoiler alert, so skip to this time if you don't want to hear it. But fighting these enemies throughout the game that look like straight up monsters, and coming to find out that they are the physical embodiment of human souls. And you find out sometime through the game that you've actually been killing children and just slaughtering innocent people sometimes, which is a really big revelation, but it's something that is necessary to do if you want to find your daughter and continue upon your path to get her back one day. Overall, Near Just Star is a game that I don't want to spoil for anybody. If you have not played it, please watch a walkthrough of it, watch the cutscenes on YouTube, or if you have a PS3, order it from Amazon or somewhere. It is 
a game that is a little bit lackluster in the gameplay aspect, but the story is more than makes up for you having to go through that somewhat monotonous gameplay. Next, Dragon Guard 3. This is a game that I've struggled with over the years. I used to love it. At some points, I used to really hate it. And now I have a kind of a sense of that I just generally have an appreciation of this game. Because I feel like in the story that is told within Dragon Guard 3, Yoko Taro really had no holds bar. Like nobody really held him back when making this story pretty much. And he just basically put in there whatever he wanted to. Which to an extent I can appreciate. But also to an extent I feel like somebody should have been there to kind of pull him in. Because there are a lot of like fourth wall breaking moments. Which are cool a couple of times throughout the story. But at a certain point it gets kind of annoying and kind of like off-putting at a certain point and then obviously everybody knows the technical aspects of this game very much weighed down the game could honestly be maybe on the level of near automata if the gameplay was a bit different and two of course if the game was technically just a good game obviously the low dipping frame rates the really really crappy textures comparatively when it came out on the ps3 when it did it has some really crappy textures for the time um, and not to mention the dragon gameplay just all around sucking um, I have to put Dragon Guard 3 at the C tier mainly because it has a lot of potential and if it was remade with it playing properly like not dropping the 30 frames every time a whole bunch of enemies came on screen or you were fighting a lot of enemies and they actually flushed out the flying combat and made it more akin to Dragon Guard 1 as opposed to the crap that they actually had in Dragon Guard 3, it would be an amazing game. Last but not least, did you not think it wasn't going to be here? Obviously, S tier is near Automata. For this series, this is kind of the pinnacle of where Yoko Taro is right now. From the characters to all of the callbacks to Nier, Dragon Guard 1, even Dragon Guard 3, to weaving this wonderful tale that older fans that know pretty much everything about the lore can appreciate and to new fans who jumped in just that this game can appreciate just the story standalone as itself and all of the meta commentary and all of the themes running throughout this game and just all of the stuff that you can find meaning in within this game is just absolutely amazing it's personally my favorite game of the ps4 xbox and Nintendo Wii U slash Switch era in my personal opinion. It is overall just my favorite game in this generation. One of my favorite games of all time. In the last two years that it has been out, I've played it over five times. So that gives you a pretty good indication of how good this game is. And I can't wait to see what Yoko Taro does next. I know Sino Alice, which is the mobile game that he's working on, is planned for a global release sometime very soon this year. So we'll be getting that in America. And with Nier Automata actually hitting 4 million sales as of very recently in Square Enix financial report, I'm pretty sure they're going to be willing to throw some money Yoko Taro's way very, very soon. I wouldn't be surprised if we heard something about a new Dragon Guard game or something brand new in the Dragon Nier universe coming to us in the near possible future in the next one to two years. So with that being said, let me know your opinions on the games. How would you rank them in your own personal opinion? Overall, this is how I see them as of right now, but my opinions are always changing. And with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, subscribe, turn on notifications as well if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you all in the next one.